Hey everybody, Tim Brzezinski here. In this quick screencast, I'm gonna show you how to build a cylinder in GeoGebra's 3D app. We're gonna build this cylinder to scale really quickly, and then we're gonna save it, open it on our device, and project it in augmented reality to see how well the model that we built fits the real life model that you see right here. So I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna rock and roll. So feel free to you know build along if you want. Um, so uh, pause it when you need to and let's get going. So we're gonna go here. Let me just show you the exact cylinder here. Here's the dimensions, all right? This cylinder here is a radius of four and 5,500 centimeters and a height of 12 centimeters. So we're gonna go here and literally build in the 3D calculator, all right? And the app right there. So what I'm gonna choose to do is first of all, put a point at zero, zero, zero. I wanna make this the base. Uh, I wanna make this the center of one of the base circles right there, okay? And wouldn't it also make sense to put another point at four and 5,500? Zero, zero. When I talk with students with modeling, it's like, well, when we model using coordinate geometry, it makes sense to try to maximize the number of times we see zero as a coordinate because it makes the algebra easier, right? Of course it does. So let's uh, let's actually go out of here for a second. All right, let's make this full screen so we can see it. Now, the higher this thing is 12. Okay, so I'm going to put a point up here. At the high, So zero, zero, 12 up the z-axis there. So I'll zoom out so we can see that better. So A and C are the centers of my circles, right? And I'm gonna have a, you know, the lateral area going around like this. Now to do this, we need a base circle. Now GeoGebra gives us three powerful ways in which we can build it. I'm gonna show you all three ways right here. The first, the first one is a circle with axis through point, circle with center radius and axis. And then this one is probably the most intuitive for students I find, circle through three points. So what students will often do is they'll take, well, point B is right there, right? So we could also plot a point here at the uh, zero, four, and 5,500, zero. See what I mean? And then another point at negative four and 5,500, zero, zero. Well, like that. And so therefore now going to this tool right here makes it, it's, it's super easy to use, right? Circle through three points is really B, D, and then E, and voila, there it is. All right, but let's undo what we just did. I want to show you a different way to make it. In fact, we can actually move. We can actually delete E and delete D. We don't even need those. All we need is A and B. Okay, so check out this tool here. I find this one very easy to use. Okay, circle with axis through point right here. All right, so the through with axis through point. You got to select the axis then a point on the circle. Now the axis of the circle I want to make here is the, is the line that's perpendicular to that gray plane containing the circle, but it passes through the center. So isn't the axis the z-axis, which I'll touch right there? Then I'll touch B on the circle and there it is. See how easy that is? All right, I'll undo it again. Again, select that, that, that tool there, circle, select the z-axis, and then a point on the circle, there it is. Now I'm going to show you one more way to do this, to introduce a new tool to you here. Oh, and that tool is the uh, circle with center and radius and direction tool. So we select the center point, direction, then the radius. Right Now the center point is A. The direction is simply the axis itself. So click on the axis and G. What's the radius? Oh, is it 4 and 55 hundredths? Right? There you go. Three ways to do the same thing, all super easy. All right. Now the, the three point one is probably the most intuitive to students, but the other students, you know, they should, you know, have some exposure to that and just be able to, to use them. All right. The three their tools at their disposal there. Now, what we need here to do is to use the cylinder tool. That's under the solids right here. There it is. All you need to make a cylinder is that base circle and the height. And then you're done. All right. Select two points. That's good. That's the distance, you know, the height. So I'm going to select point A and then C. And then into the radius, uh, yeah, four and 55 hundredths. Bingo, there it is. Now I'll hit the move arrow, turn everything off. I'm gonna right click on this circle right here because I wanna actually go to style. I wanna make that thinner, if you will. Okay, maybe to a two, the top circle, I'll make a thickness of two. And also I like to leave it unchanged. I don't like dashes. Let's hide the black circle because we don't, we just needed that black circle simply to, um, you know, uh, basically make the cylinder itself but there's my cylinder we can hide the three points clean up shop here i'm going to right click here i'm going to even hide the axes i'm going to just leave that gray plane showing this is what i see how long did that take all right so now let's actually zoom in a little bit i'm going to save this i'm going to go to file save 
I'll make it public so it's easy to find. And let's save it as a, a cylinder sample two. And then I'm going to hit save. Now it says saving down there, saving, saving, and saved successfully. Okay. So anytime I can go back here and open it, okay. In fact, if I just get out of here, it's okay to leave because why? If I go back here to GeoGebra, anytime you save a construction, a graph, something simple, something complex, it doesn't matter. If you go to your profile, see cylinder sample two is the latest item, latest resource. I click on it, right? That's exactly how I left it. Now, granted, it has a cla GeoGebra Classic appearance. I can't modify it. Doesn't matter right now. But, you know, if at all I did want to go back and modify it, I'd go here and go to open an app, right? And um, now this is the classic app here. That's the, oh, wait, that looks different, Tim. Yeah, that's GeoGebra Classic. But if you want to keep working in the 3D calculator that we were just in, just get rid of classic and change it to 3D and boom, it's going to open right in the same app in which we like literally just worked. Okay, kind of like that. All right, little trick there. So now let's uh, get out of here. We're going to actually a little profile. I, what I need to do is get the URL for this, the resource I just made. So see up here, R-Y-R uh, DV6SS. That's the URL there. Now I could do one of two things on my Acer Chromebook here off to the right. I'm going to try to, um, whoops, let me uh, just, there it is. All right, I'm going to highlight it there. I'm going to actually uh, open up the 3D, make sure it's closed out first. It is, okay. I'm going to open up the 3D grapher, and then I'm just going to get it up there. Now, that was the last one I just had up there, but I'm going to clear that. I tried this before, but um, I messed up in the other recording. So I'm going to just do this from scratch again. So right here, there it is. I'm going to open. Now, I can try typing in cylinder sample 2, like the exact title. That's one way to try to get it. If you make it public, it could show up. Now, I, I, must, I uh, jumbled the words together. Cylinder sample two, that was the title. No resources found there. Okay, so let's try it a different way. Hang on a second. So let's try it. Um, duty calculator. Open right here. Um, RYR DV 6SS. Oh, I did AS accidentally. 6SS. There it is. Cylinder sample two. All right. So now if I click on it, it'll load. See that that's literally just how I left it. That's how it looks. All right. So I built this here, opened it up here a minute or two later. Now, if I hit the AR button right there, I can project it in my environment and see what happens. So let's do that really quickly right now. So sorry for the mess. Here we go. Boom. Hit that. All right. I'm actually going to go to settings. I'm going to hide the gray plane. I don't want to show that. I can alter it here right in my virtual environment here. Hit the down arrow. Get that thing going. And let's see how this baby looks. Let's see. Ready? Let's put this to the test. Not bad, huh? Let me hold it more level on my desk here. Give me a second. It's a little crooked on my device here. I have to tilt it, but that's all right. There we go. Now, I also you can also change the color here, too. We can modify this virtually uh, as, we're, as we're in augmented reality. See the cylinder right here? If I go to settings... I can actually change the color to this nice uh, turquoisey blue. That might show up a little bit better. So contrast is better there. So check this out. All right here we go. Get it from a better angle here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, lies the power. That's the power of GeoGebra 3D with augmented reality. Uh, on the Acer Google Chrome tablets here, this augmented reality is powered by AR Core by Google. It's an app that's uh, hidden uh, on any Android device or device like this Acer Chromebook, and it gets better every every update. I get an update about once a week, auto updates, and it literally is it it gets better every time I uh, every time I test it out. So 
with that said, um, thanks for watching. The next one, I'm going to actually show you two ways to make a cylinder, but we're going to use parametric equations and a little trig. Uh, another way we can do it so we can actually um, work with our Algebra 2 pre-calculus and trig students. So thanks for watching. I'm Tim Brzezinski. If you like what you see, feel free to describe. My heart's intent is to provide you with the power and the tools that you need to help foster active student-centered discovery learning in your classroom. I use a lot of apps to do that. GeoGebra is the one I use primarily, but hey, um, as long as students, as long as the learning is student centered, that's, that's, that's my heart in, uh, in making these. So thanks for watching. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and, uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.